Well, I start recording the first webinar for midterm review of, uh, of bioscience. Today is November 12th, it's 10, uh, Sunday, 10.30 uh, p.m. a.m. And uh, we are going to start with a review of the webinar. Thank you for everybody uh, coming for uh, uh, this, this, this morning. All right, so let's start. And here what we are going to go is a very brief review at the beginning, and then we will go into more details. So in the first slide, you can see uh, we uh, I prepared some, uh, some review about general topics. And when you are talking about physical environment, social, emotional, intellectual, and vocational, and spiritual um, uh, dimension, you are talking about the six dimensions. And for the midterm, you must actually uh, uh, define and you mo uh, you're going to uh, describe what is one each of these uh, six dimensions. Just remember that oh, the importance about this is that the person is, is not just uh, a disease, it's not just an organ. So all these things together are going to make the person healthy and uh, that is the definition of the, what we need to uh, remember always. The patient is just not a medication, the patient is just not liver or lungs, the patient is a physical, emotional, spiritual, intellectual and social, have a social environment. Okay, so that is about. Another thing that we, we are going to review during, this is like a, a small summary from the review we are going to talk today, is about, and you can make notes about that, uh, to make some review at home too, is uh, about the carbohydrates. If you remember, we was, uh, I was really trying to put in your mind that uh, ce uh, ce the cellulose is a carbohydrate, okay? The glycogen is a carbohydrate. And this is what we can see about the cellulose. The cellulose, they have these fibers, but that's what we call uh, fiber because they have these microfibers that cannot be digested by the body. And that is what we call a polysaccharide, right? So this is something that we will talk in a few moments. Then we have here uh, uh, your super ultra favorite is about talking about glycolysis. And that is something that we will talk today. And I'm going to remark some few things about a, a glycolysis. Uh, you know that we have our ATPs, and the ATPs are going to be the rechargeable battery, and the rechargeable battery are going to release the phosphate, release the phosphate, and when they release the phosphate, they are going to, uh, they are going to, uh, a, when they release the phosphate, they release the energy. Just a moment. Okay, they release the energy and uh, they need another phosphate to be reincorporated in order to uh, re uh, reconfigure the ATP. So ATP release the phosphate and what is coming is the ADP. And the ADP then is going to use energy in order to reincorporate re re some phosphate into the ATP. We are going to see a video about uh, uh, the heart today. Uh, we we need to remark about the hormonal control of homeostasis. Remember what is homeostasis? Homeostasis is the internal balance, and we are going to talk about a lot today. Then we have, we are going to talk about the uh, pH, the pH values, and uh, what is acid, what is alkaline. I want just you to get ready to remember what substances in the body we have, uh, pH 2, pH 6, pH 12, pH 7, etc. We, have, we are going to talk to about epithelium, and the epithelium are the, one of the most important, I was telling you in class, is the pseudo-stratified epithelium. That is about the uh, respiratory tract, and uh, the importance uh, about these cells. Classification of tissues is some topic too that is going to uh, be asked in, the, uh, in this midterm. And uh, not only connective tissue, but the muscular tissue. So you must remember the muscular tissue or muscle tissue is having three types of muscles, right? The voluntary or skeletal muscle. We have the, the smooth muscle and we have the cardiac muscle. 
all three are different type of muscles. We have, again, we have our enzymes. The enzymes are going to have some components that are going to participate together. Can you see and remark here, it's a substract, that is the reactant, and the enzyme. The enzyme, they're going to have a same, 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 same shape in order to have the uh, reaction. So each enzyme has a specific substructs. Here we have, uh, again, our friend, the corpus callosum. And the corpus callosum is, if you see this guy, this is the cerebrum, cerebrum. And in between, there is somebody who's trying to hold each other, right? So they say, we need to work together. And this is the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is the one who uh, literally is the bridge between one, one, one brain and another brain. Another, sorry, cerebrum. Cerebrum and cerebrum. Okay? So we are going to talk about that. Another connection here, you see, uh, we are looking from under, uh, posteriorly and under the brain. And here we have the temporal lobes. And here is the uh, cerebellum. The cerebellum is being connected as as you can see here by uh, a structure called the vermis the vermis we will talk about macronutrients and micronutrients we are going to talk about the kidney the kidney and the anatomy and physiology we have we are going to talk about the passive transport the membrane transportation membrane transportation we will we will like to talk about the uh, regions of the abdominal area the, we are going to talk about the uh, uh, anions and cations, intra and extracellular. We, we are going to talk about the nervous system as his components. And we have the, the, uh, the, the bones that are going to be ionic and covalent. So let's start. This is, was just the introduction of what we are going to see today. Okay, so give me a second. All right, so let's start with the lectures, and uh, actually we are going to do very, very, uh, very a summary about that. Let me check who else is here. Just a moment, just to be sure that some of you need some password, some PIN. No attentive, just a moment. Uh, I have, uh, just a moment, please. I have uh, some, uh, Bent, can you hear me, Bent? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Bunnit, can you hear me? Bunnit? Bunnit, Bunnit Kaur, can you hear me? Bianca? Hi, Bianca. Thank you. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so let's start, please. If, uh, if there is some problem with the audio video, just immediately let me know in the, there is a box down there that you can uh, ask questions and you can raise your hand there and I will, I will know if there is something that we can do. All right, so let's start with the first video. And you know, time is going to be pass very fast. So I want just to go and try to uh, remark what is important to know for our uh, next module and for our midterm and final and for the rest of your career. So I'm going to try to make a summary of that. All right, so let's start with organ systems. And what I want just to remark about organ system is that uh, you need to differentiate what is a system and what is an organ. A system, we have muscular system. Muscular system is all the muscles. So we start to review here. Muscles, we have how many type of muscles do we have? How many group of muscles? We have three type of muscles, right? So we have the cardiac involuntary. Please remember involuntary. The smooth muscle involuntary and the skeletal muscle that is the uh, voluntary muscle that is the muscle that we can move. 
Nervous system is a group of organs that are going to be, for example, nervous system is composed by the brain and the peripheral nervous system. So we can add more from the first class. Endocrine system. Endocrine system, you must differentiate what is the uh, what is the difference between exocrine and endocrine system. Uh, cardiovascular system is uh, cardiovascular. All the uh, vessels and all the arteries, uh, veins, and the heart are included. Respiratory system, we was talking about the respiratory system. Remember, we was talking about the upper and the lower respiratory tract. The upper go from the nasopharynx down to the to the what? To the uh, larynx, right? Okay. Okay, just give me a second. Okay, I cannot see it. Okay, there. Okay. Okay, so uh, here we have, so we have all the 11 systems that we are uh, actually looking at. Uh, we are going to continue here with the planes and uh, talking about the planes, you must know at this moment for your medical terminology, all the suffix and prefix, ventral, dorsal, medial, proximal, planes of division, and what i going to uh, really, uh, first of all, we are going to talk about the six dimensions. So health, what is health? Health is lack of disease. And wellness is your, uh, uh, your, uh, your habits. Okay, so how health, how wellness you are, if you don't eat, for example, Kentucky Fried Chicken or any other fast food or uh, uh, alcohol in excess or etc. right? So we have, uh, so wellness free of disease, and wellness is the balance of your physical, social, spiritual, emotional, environmental, and well-being. So this wellness is actually directly rela related to the health dimensions, to the health dimensions. So the health dimensions is uh, uh, talking about your wellness, about your wellness. Physical is mostly related to the, to the health. So this portion of the six dimensions is health, and the rest is going to be the wellness. So all together is going to create uh, actually a wealthy and healthy person. All right, so uh, saying that, let's go over uh, our uh, another very high yield topic, please. Open eyes, open ears, you see this. Here we have the primary prevention, secondary prevention, and tertiary prevention. Very fast, because I know that this is a review is a prevention is, for example, vaccines, primary disease prevention, vaccines preventing all the risk factors. Smoking, alcohol, fast food. So though if we do that, we are doing, we are doing right now primary disease prevention. The secondary is when you go to your doctor early uh, once a year and you have an early diagnosis. So early detection, early detection of the problem is secondary disease. And the tertiary is when you are uh, actually receiving treatment. After that diagnosis, you go to the hospital, you go to the clinical in order to receive the corresponding treatment. So we have primary, secondary, tertiary. Primary, vaccines, risk factors away. Secondary, go to the doctor one every year, and tertiary disease is your treatment. So let's keep going. So here we have another word that is really important. It's about homeostasis. Homeostasis is the internal balance, right? And you can tell, please, put in your mind, homeostasis is going to be the relationship between the nervous system and the endocrine system. So endocrine system are the factors, are the ones who are going to uh, adapt your body to the new situation. But how do you know that? How do we know that? With a nervous system. So nervous system is the one who are the brain, who are the, the, the thinkers, let's put it this way, the one who knows everything, and they are going to decide what they need to do, do or not to do. And that is, your, uh, uh, that is going to be the job of the endocrine system. So homeostasis, balance between, it's internal balance, and mostly 
the, the system that are going to be related is the nervous system and the, and the endocrine, endocrine system. Okay, Saida, hi, how are you? You're welcome. So let's keep going. So uh, homeostasis, nervous system B, and endocrine system. Perfect. So metabolism, metabolism, another key word here in all the exams. Metabolic is a chemical reaction, or all the sum of chemical reaction of an organism. It could be, you can describe in two ways, anabolic and catabolic. So the sum of this anabolic plus catabolic, so anabolic building up and catabolic breaking down, that is actually metabolism. Example, put a piece of bread in your mouth. Okay, so if you put a piece of bread in your mouth, you are going to put, you are going to have hydrolysis and that leads into catabolic reaction, for example. Is the broken is the broken of the glycogen or the starch into small components, right? So that is the application of what we talking about. Metabolism in addition is, for example, when you convert glucose into pyruvic acid, or when you have pyruvic acid into aceto CoA, or when you have the fatty acid get into aceto CoA through the uh, through the beta oxidation. If you pay attention to what I'm saying, I'm going to repeat and repeat everything about what we must know. So I'm not going to talk about every single detail of the of the slides because it's, this is a review. So uh, pathology, what is pathology? Pathology is the study of the disease. Study of the disease. Well, so what you study on disease? You study everything, how it's going to start, how, how it's transmitted. Uh, what are the signs and symptoms? So everything that you want to know about pathology, about the disease, is actually the I study the pathology. If there's questions again, there is a hand up or questions at, uh, 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 slot there in the in the machine, so you can actually uh, ask in any time. All right. So mass and matter. So you already know, and you like very much the conversions from pounds to kilos and kilo to pounds. And uh, that is actually the uh, main thing just to understand what is the minimal, what is the minimal expression of mass is going to be the atom, right? And matter is any space that contains mass, right? So that is, for example, you are talking, I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you, uh, or you are talking to somebody, the, uh, the, the sound is traveling to, to my mouth, to your ear, so that means that in the middle, in the air, there is some matter because sound needs matter in order to be transmitted. So this is, for example, matter, an atom, an atom, molecules, those are matter. And when we want to measure that matter, when you want to measure that matter, the unit that we use is the weight, kilograms and pounds. Okay, so here we have the energy, another thing, the heat, for some forms of energy, what forms of energy are around you now? What sounds, what forms of energy do you have? Right now we are using electricity, right? So that is ele electrical energy. And where we have electricity in the nervous system in order to transmit the impulses from one place to another, right? Light, how do we use the light? The light energy is hitting our eyes and the light is going to be transformed from from uh, energy from light into uh, electrical impulses through our uh, receptors in our eye so the eye can the brain can read those messages through a code that is the electricity so light is going to transform in electrical in electrical changes in electrical messages that are going to be interpreted by the by the brain we have the chemicals chemistry so all the chemistry all the chemical reactions that we do, how energy, of course, right? If we have the bonds between foods, in between elements, when they break it down by catabolism or uh, digestion, these uh, broken bonds are going to release chemical energy. That is the chemical energy. Uh, mechanical energy is when you actually move your, uh, when you have any uh, physical action, any activity. That is going to be a mechanical, mechanical energy. For example, we have the diaphragm, mechanical energy, right? We have the, 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 what? the heart that is pumping out mechanical energy that is going to eject the blood, 
through the uh, through the system and just remember we have acoustic energy the acoustic energy the way you can hear me the uh, the tympanus are going to receive the waves of my sound like this and what happened this mechanical this is mechanical force this mechanical force are going to be transformed again in electricity that is going to be read by the brain and that's how you interpret it, the sounds so one sound after another no? how fast can work our brain and heat heat is the lowest form of energy why because uh, this energy cannot be uh, uh, it's not as usual it's like a uh, is lost no it's not it's not lost it's actually cannot be used in other words for example the engine the engine the engine of your car so your car is start to heat up right but this heat this heat it could be nice to keep it because it's an energy uh, getting out from the car and we can use it as as energy for the car for to use less gas right but this heat is going to escape from the from the from the engine and that is what happened with our body so and the temperature uh, that we have is a, a consequence of these chemical reactions all right so let's keep going so we are going to see some um, atom is the basic unit of matter remember please so we have for example let's make one example here uh, here we have, for example, let's see, lithium. Lithium, lithium is having three protons and three neutrons. And we have three electrons. So just remember the number of electrons are the same, the number of protons, and the number of protons and electrons are going to be the same, the number of neutrons. So then after that, they are going to try to satisfy the orbit of energy. Okay, so here we have the, uh, uh, remember, we have the, the orbits. The orbits, we have two to satisfy the other orbit. We have eight in the second orbit. And we have another eight in the, in the third orbit to be, comp to be orbit happy. In this case, we have two plus eight. Uh, we have 10 plus one, 11. That is the sodium. You can tell this is the valence the valency so these can exchange this i this electron in this case it's easier to lose right to lose one electron than rather gain seven electrons all right so that is about a okay so another thing i see in the group that they have some problems to know what is a cation and what is an anion so please cation and anions are actually ions Ions means an atom or an atom or element that has a charge. What charge? Positive or negative. That is all what is an ion. So what is the classification of ions are going to be anions and cations. Anion is negative and the cation is positive. If you remember, uh, if you remember, uh, let me see, let me see something. Please, I want you always to be uh, aware of this. Just a moment. Okay, what I want you is, is to remember that we have the intracellular, intracellular, and we have the extracellular, right? The intracellular, what are the most common, the most common uh, ions and cations are going to be the phosphate, the phosphate, and phosphate, sorry, and the, uh, and the uh, potassium. Plus, in the extracellular, outside of the cell, the most common is the chloride and the other one is the sodium so it's like salt remember salt table salt so it's actually extracellular the intracellular are going to be phosphates and potassium so please this is crucial and they're probably going to you going to see uh, some um, uh, concern about that in the next in the next uh, uh, exams all right, so let's talk about the lecture number two, and we were talking about valency already, and uh, uh, we are going to see the classification of the chemical reactions. Very fast, we have bonds, bonds, and the bonds are going to be uh, are going to be ionic, 
and covalent, right? Covalent. So I'm going to make a summary right now. So please pay attention. Covalent is going to be polar and no polar. Okay? Polar, for example, we have the water. And no polar, what, what could be more po no polar? Especially fat, right? So polar is polar at the same time is hydrophobic, hydrophilic, hydrophilic. And the no polar are going to be hydrophobic. Okay? So hydrophilic and hydrophobic. So those are actually is a classification. Yes, you, you already know, I'm not going to repeat that many times, that ionic is for money, right? For money. And for covalent is going to be for love, right? Okay, so just remember, covalent is subdivided in uh, polar that are hydrophilic. Uh, example, the water, and no polar fat, we have hydrophobic. Another thing that I want just to add here is hydrophobic, for example, are the fat soluble vitamins, and that is the vitamin A, the vitamin D, the vitamin E, and vitamin K. This is really something that you need to master, okay? All right, so let's keep going. Any questions, please, again, I'm ready to answer. All right, so that is about the summary of the uh, polar, no polar. Uh, we already talked about, we are going to talk about the chemical, uh, the chemistry uh, organic versus, versus inorganic. We have uh, the, we have organic, remember organic, is going to have at least one carbon and at least one hydrogen okay so that is the classification of uh, of uh, um, a classification of organic versus inorganic okay all right okay let's keep going all right so body cavities you will uh, definitely hear the body cavities are going to be, this is the heart. This is the heart. This is the middle mediastinum, right? And that is the only thing I want you to remember. The rest, no. So the middle mediastinum here, the middle mediastinum is where it's going to be located, the heart. Okay, so here we have another, we are going to see another view. Let me see if I have a view here. Uh, uh, we have the, the heart, you know, that is, first of all, the heart, here we have the, the division. Remember, thorax, abdominal, cav abdominal pelvic cavity. The name is abdominal pelvic cavity because there is no division between the pelvis and the, and the abdomen. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so that is about the lecture number two. So let's go over other lectures. Uh, we are going to do lecture uh, three and four. So it's going to be a very nice summary. I'm sure that you will like it, hopefully. And uh, you will tell me if I have some something you want me to talk about more. All right, so here we have our the nutrients. Okay classification by sure any questions coming all questions coming like that they are going to ask you all quiz quizzes and tests and midterms are coming with this question what are actually a macronutrients and micronutrients so we have here our um uh just a moment uh, color Okay. All right. So here we have the we have macronutrients. Macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay. The macronutrients, the macronutrients are going to be everything that is going to be giving in huge amounts or big amounts, right? Big amounts are going to be carbohydrates, are going to be lipids, and it's going to be proteins. Meantime, in micronutrients, mostly it's going to be the vitamins and the minerals. Just to make a shortcut, the vitamins are the coenzymes, right? It's coenzymes that produce the is cooperation with the enzymatic reaction. And the minerals here, the minerals are going to be the uh, cofactors that are going to help to for the enzymatic reactions. 
All right, so you need to remember what are the classification of carbohydrates. The main thing that I want you to remember is these monosaccharides, the disaccharides, and the polysaccharides. Okay, monosaccharides, just very fast. We have the galactose, galactose. We have who else? We have the, um, the uh, galactose, the fructose, fructose. And we have who? The uh, glucose. And in the disaccharides, we are going to have galactose plus, plus glucose is going to be the lactose. Fructose plus glucose, again, that is going to be the sucrose. And the glucose plus glucose is going to be the, going to give you the beer, the maltose, right? Not the beer, the maltose. A little bit later. Okay, so that is about carbohydrates. So, uh, please, here, there's many questions imply about the classification of the uh, sugars. What I want you to focus is this, monosaccharides, disaccharides, and these, please, starch, glycogen, cellulose, those are the things that are going to be important always to remember. So we already talked about uh, monosaccharides and these disaccharides. Forget about the oligosaccharides. And we have the polysaccharides, starch, amylose, amylose. I want uh, to be totally familiar with these names, amylopectin, amylose, amylose, amylopectin. And we have the cellulose this is not digestible. So this is a polysaccharide that is digested, can be digested. The starch, of course, if you eat a pan, a pan, I mean, sorry, a bread, that, <laughs> that is going to uh, uh, give, uh, uh, is going to um, break down in pieces, right? So that means that it's digestible. Meantime, the cellulose, the cellulose is not digestible. Glycogen, please, this is the star. Glycogen, this is actually our... Uh, that is, glycogen is, we store about two pounds, right? Two pounds. And what else? Plus, each pound collect four, four pounds of water, so eight, totally eight pounds of water, right? So, total, we have 10 pounds of weight, 10 pounds of weight. So, just remember that glycogen, please. Glycogen is carbohydrate. Glycogen is carbohydrate. Glycogen is carbohydrate. All right, so let's keep going. All right, so we have the monosaccharides, the oligosaccharides. Let's keep going. So primary functions of the proteins. So we talk about proteins a lot, right? We was talking proteins a lot. And when we talk about proteins, the main thing I want you to remember, please, is everything is important. Building tissue, repair tissue. We have enzymes, hormones, 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 enzymes. And we have, uh, they are going to control the fluid balance. Why? Because water is going to love what? Sodium for one side, and we love, they love proteins. Proteins, proteins, proteins. So proteins is always to, it's going always to pull water, same as sodium. Oops. Oh, okay. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, all right, so uh, for, you know, the hydrophilic, so we have the proteins. What is important about the proteins, and I want just to go here just to refresh you because this is really important. Somebody left in the, so we have 40, now we have 39. So we have uh, the hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is a protein. Hemoglobin, if you see here, this is the red blood cell. This is the red blood cell. Here inside, we have 24,000 of these chains of hemoglobin, 24,000. And this having iron, can you see the iron here? This iron, this is iron, this is iron. Each molecule of hemoglobin have four irons. And that is where it's going to come the, uh, is going to come the, um, the oxygen. So the oxygen is coming here. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So hemoglobin is going to, be an association of what? Of globin, that is a protein, plus a nucleo M, that is a, a, compo a composed that has this a, uh, iron. Insulin, first of all, please, you need to be very quick on that. 
insulin, protein, insulin, protein, insulin hormone, okay, pancreatic use, pancreatic use, what we have in the pancreatic use, pancreatic use, we have the lipase, we have the amylase, and we have the, uh, the what, the protease, the protease, okay, so let's keep going. About tissues, okay, so about tissues, what I want is to remember is this. First of all, the, we have how many, for, how many type of tissue we have? How many type of tissue we have? We have epithelial, please, epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous system, period. So four, four, four of these are tissues. This is basically, why I'm saying that, I was asking many times, uh, I'm, people start to hesitate to know to tell me how many type of tissue we have in your body right so this is very very important so epithelial and the epithel epithelial what i want is to focus here in the pseudo stratified columnar epithelium this guy in the pseudo stratified if you see here these where are located this is going to be in the respiratory tract it's going to be in the respiratory tract is going to be in the respiratory tract. Some of these cells are going to transform, are going to specialize, and they are going to be called the goblet cells. The goblet cells. The goblet cells. Goblet cells. That is going to produce mucus. Mucus on the top of the epithelium. When they produce mucus, that is going to protect us against the bacteria invading the cells. Right? Can you see it? And actually, the cilia here on the top they are going to have some, uh, uh, they are going to have, for example, we here we have some like a small villi, a small villi. Can you see the villi? So this villi is going to be in the top of these cells that are in the respiratory tract, as we said, with, in conjunction with the goblet cells that are going to cover the mucus. So that is going to be very difficult for the bacteria to travel. And that must, you, you must remember about epithelium. Epithelium, in addition, is going to cover inside the hollow organs, inside the hollow organs, and outside the hollow organs. Stomach, for example, put your finger inside the stomach. That is going, you're touching epithelium. This is the mucosa. And mucosa is epithelium. They are touched outside the stomach. You're taking, you're, take, you're touching the serosa, serosa. And the serosa, what is that? Epithelium. You're, you're touching inside your mouth. That is going to be epithelium. You're touching in your skin. That is that is epithelium. And here we are going to see the uh, the uh, for example the uh, the mucus. What is mucus? Mucus is a secretion that is in this area. Can you see this? Uh, I will show you. This is the mucus. This kind of uh, grayish. And here, who produced this guy? These are the. I'm going to make. I like this. So I'm going to make it bigger. No, I cannot. Okay. So here we have the uh, pseudo stratif remember pseudo stratified epithelium of what of the respiratory tract they have the cilia this is moving imagine it's moving and this had this goblet cell was at the beginning a pseudo stratified but they change they modify they specialize and this is called now the goblet cells who produce this mucus in blue so mucus and cilia are coming working together in order to seep out the bacteria they can Try, trying to invade our 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 system. All right, so let's talk about connective tissue and uh, uh, let me see what I want you to remember about the, uh, here is this, okay? The classification of the connective tissue. Classification of connective tissue, we are going to have liquid connective tissue. Don't be afraid. Don't think that uh, the fat is only connective tissue. It's more than that. Connective tissues, any tissue who are connecting tissues. That's what is called connective tissue. So we have soft and loose. We have areolar and adipose. This areolar mostly is the, the fat that is under the skin. And adipose is mostly uh, fat that is located in between muscles and between organs. But is the fat that we regularly can see, for example, when you clean a chicken or when you clean the meat of your beef, they have fat that is areolar and adipose tissue. Uh, fibrous are the tendons and hard 
are the bone and cartilage. So you must know this. Start with liquid and then go to heart. And then, uh, let me see here. So, you, so go to uh, what are the extremes. So we have liquid in one side, uh, liquid in one side, and we have heart in the other side. What is liquid? The blood. What is heart? Bone and cartilage. Bone and cartilage are actually the uh, uh, the the uh, uh, heart connective tissue. In between, what we have, we are going to have soft. That is a little bit more than liquid, right? Areolar and adipose tissue. And what is difficult to remember sometimes is the fibrous. Fibrous sounds sounds like um, he, sounds like hard, but it's not as hard as the hard connective tissue. These are going to be the ligaments, ligaments, tendons, okay? Tendons. So, all right, so that is about that. So the connective tissue, let's keep going. Okay, please, the muscle. Muscle, just to refresh again. The muscle is going to be, we have the uh, skeletal muscle. Please, skeletal muscle. Yes, open your mind, trying to memorize it now. We have skeletal muscle, we have the smooth muscle and the cardiac muscle. Those guys are, are muscles but are eventually different. They are different. We have the skeletal muscle. You have, can you see, multi-stride, multi-nuclei, multi-nuclei, a lot of nuclei. And the smooth muscle is going to be one, nucle one nucleus only per cell. So a skeletal muscle, they have, can you see these lines? These lines. So those are actually what we call a striation. So that's why it's called a striat muscle. So that's why it's called a striat muscle, a striat muscle. So we have here a striat muscle plus stri striations plus multinuclei, and we have no striation with one nucleus. And you can see the cardiac muscle is one cell. This is one cell. It's not so two cells. It's one cell similar as smooth muscle, one nucleus similar as smooth muscle, but this has striations too, similar as the skeletal muscle. So this cardiac muscle is similar in between the skeletal and the smooth muscle. So we have how many type of muscles? Three type of muscles. And remember, this cardiac is involuntary. So in, remember in uh, uh, nervous system, involuntary. And the other one is involuntary, the smooth muscle. So, sorry, uh, yes, the smooth muscle and cardiac muscle are involuntary, and the skeletal muscle is voluntary. It's the only one who is voluntary. So knowing that, you are you can uh, be happy to just uh, have that information. Okay, so we have here our uh, neurons, right? This is the nerve cell, this is nervous tissue, and the nervous tissue, mostly they are going to divide it. We are talking about classification, right? So we have the nerve cells, nerve cells, nerve cells, and they are going to be divided in neurons, neurons, that is a nerve cell too, and the glia, the glia, glia. So both glia, glia. So those are the two groups of cells that we have in the nerve cell. Neurons are going to be what we show here, for example, this guy. This is a nerve cell. Just to go here, this is the, 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 the body or soma, this is the nucleus, this is the axon, and what is this? The end of the axon, we call that terminal axon. Here we have the dendrites, the dendrite, and the dendrites are going to uh, be the continuation of communication with the other cell that is coming up below. So these dendrites are going to connect with the terminal, terminal axon. So, okay, so that is the way they, so please, the, these terminal axons do not communicate directly to another terminal axon. No, they are going to contact the next dendrite of the next uh, nerve cell. Okay, so we have here the uh, the Schwann cells. The Schwann cells. So the Schwann cells have a uh, please remember Schwann cells. Schwann cells. Schwann cells contain the myelin. Myelin. The myelin. The myelin. The myelin, okay. This myelin is fat, is fat, uh, is fat. And what is doing these guys is going to increase or speed up the electrical impulses, electrical impulses, 
that is what is doing this uh, speed i'm uh, sorry zip up no speed up speed up speed up the electrical impulses okay all right here we have our Schwann cells. Remember, these is in the, are individual cells. One cell, one cell, one cell, one cell that are surrounding what the axon. The axon is under. It's like uh, you put a cord and you put, I don't know, probably blanket or whatever when you are camping. And they are going to be actually surrounded. So in here, these are the Schwann cells, each of them. And this guy has the myelin again is going to increase the speed of the electrical impulse okay all right so we have the myelin what is inside the uh, the the Schwann cells the myelin myelin what is myelin myelin is fat okay so we have your super favorites all right so talking about uh, dna and chromosomes uh, i just want to go to very general sorry uh Something is wrong with my PowerPoint. Just a moment, please. Okay, so talking about the meantime, we, uh, can you hear me, right? Okay, so please, just, just uh, put me polls or questions, whatever, if there is some interrup interruption of the video. Um, here we have the, uh, the DNA. And the DNA, the only thing I want to remember yeah, it's, it's not working. Just a moment. Something is wrong with my uh, computer. Just a moment. Okay, meantime, meantime, the, the computer is taking a little bit time. Uh, I apologize for that. It's out of my control. Uh, all right, so let me see. We have uh, okay. So just a moment, please. Okay. All right. So I don't know what's happened with the computer. Okay. Um, just a moment, please. is just frozen all right so let's continue i didn't expect this okay so we have the uh for the nucleic acids the only thing i want you to remember and i cannot even write down on my on my screen i cannot uh, we have the dna and remember we have the dna and the rna so the only thing i want to you to know is about the uh the rna is located in the nucleolus and the DNA too. So the DNA and the RNA are going to work together all the time in order to do that transcription and the translation. So basically, and I will tell you why we're learning all these nucleic acids. Why? Because I want you to understand the importance of the proteins, period. The importance of the proteins. There is many other things important too, but for bioscience and for your clinical, for your practice, you need to know the basis of how proteins are in, how in, proteins are important in your in your in your life. So, just remember that the proteins produced through the transcription and translation, and they are going to. That's why we need the nutrients, because without these uh, amino acids, we can not we cannot generate proteins at all. Okay, so let me see if I do something else here. I, I'm going to go to manage your task, and I'm going to cut my uh, PowerPoint and reopen again. Okay, so sorry for that. I'm going to reopen my PowerPoint. Okay. I should do this at the beginning. Okay. Okay, so let's go to the bottom. All right, so we passed already the nucleic acids. 
we are going to pass all that. Uh, if there are some questions, again, let me know, please, immediately. I would love to answer. All right, so that is about the nucleic acids. Uh, all right, so diseases, you need to remember what is, at this moment of your preparation, you need to remember what is sign, what is symptom, okay? And, uh, and the difference between them and what is a syndrome and what is a disease, okay? So we already know very well about that. I think we are we can pass to the next to the next slides. Yeah. So I'm trying to just to check everything that we probably needed for our evaluation. All right, so we are lecture five and six now. Okay, so we have uh, lipids. Lipids are hydrophilic. Oh, sorry. We have the phospholipids are hydrophilic Fo because phospholipids, phospholipids, phospholipids are going to have phosphorus, and is going to have. Let me see. It shows right with you. Okay, here. Higher. Oh, okay. So phospholipids is going to have the head that is phosphorus, right? The phosphorus. Here we have this is the phosphorus. And the and then we have the lipids, that is the other side of the phospholipid. So phosphorus here, and this is the lipid. So this green, can you see here in the green? This green are the cholesterol. Cholesterol here. Cholesterol. This cholesterol are going to give, as I told you before, if you put your hand under your table and you find a gum there, glue it in the table, that is the consistency of cholesterol. So what is doing cholesterol with a, with a cell are going to give a structure, shape, right? So consistency to that, to that because the, the membrane is like a gelatin, it's like silicon, and it's moving and they need some structure. So actually we have the phospholipids again that are hydrophilic, the one are the heads, round heads are hydrophilic, hydrophilic and hydrophobic in the cell. All right, so let's keep going. So uh, mostly all the all the fats are going to be uh, all are going to be uh, uh, covalent and no polar. So that means hydrophobic. So please remember this: we have uh, we are going to have the fats. The fats are going to have, just a moment, fats, fats, oh. just a moment, please, uh, what point? Okay, the fats are going to be classified in, I will tell you, few things here. So you already know about the cholesterol. Okay, cholesterol is needed for the cell membrane. Don't forget that cell membrane. Cholesterol is needed for what? For sex uh, or uh, sexual sex hormones. We have the uh, we are going to we are going to have the aldosterone. It's going to produce the cortisol. So if you review this, for example, these three are going to be mostly uh, happening in the adrenal gland, adrenal gland, adrenal gland, adrenal gland. All these products are coming from the adrenal gland. And all these guys, sex hormones, testosterone, estrogens, and progesterone are going to be sex hormones produced from the adrenal gland. And who, who needs, what we need for to form these hormones is that cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol. We have aldosterone and we have the uh, cortisol, you know, the stress hormone. Aldosterone, we will talk later. Uh, we have here the fat, we have the triglycerides, triglycerides. And you remember that triglycerides have three, uh, three fatty acids, fatty acid, fatty acid, fatty acid, and then we have here the, the glycerol, glycerol. So when you want to absorb, triglycerides cannot be absorbed from the intestine, so what they are, or to the cell, sorry, and they are going to do what? They are going to come with water, to produce the hydrolysis, remember hydrolysis of the triglycerides, and that is going to cut the. Uh, they are going to cut the uh, the three fatty acids. So three fatty acids are going to be released, and they are going to be absorbed. 
Now, uh, here, the other thing that we have is the, um, uh, the fatty acids. And this is what I want to stop a little bit here. All right, so the fatty acids are here, right? Fatty acids, fatty acids. And the fatty acids, I just want to be sure to, be, to know this. Fatty acids, uh, okay. Uh, okay, the fatty acids, fatty acids are going to be divided in saturate and unsaturate. All right, so very brief. I know that you know that, but I want to remark something here. The unsaturated, we have, we have, uh, we have the vegetable oil, right? And this is the animal oil. We have, uh, we have the uh, no essential and the essential unsaturated fatty acids. What is the one who is really important? Because we produce some fatty acids in our body. The one who cannot produ be produced by, by our body are the essential essential fatty acids. We have the linoleic and the linolenic, and that is actually the omega three. And this one is the omega six. This is NCLEX, by the way. So that's why I am telling you, this is NCLEX omega three. What is doing the omega three and the linoleic acid is to decrease the levels of cholesterol. So it's good to eat the omega-3. It's going to protect against heart diseases. Okay, the linolenic acid. Okay, so that is essential. We need to find in the nature. Where? In the diet. If we cannot find it, we cannot produce that. So people uh, have a problem. Uh, they use in most trees to reduce cholesterol and uh, increase the HDL. That is another way, another topic, another time and have uh, protection of the cardiovascular system. Okay, so let's keep going. So here we have, this is the saturate, this saturate, remember saturate, saturates like this, saturate, but the unsaturate is going to be like that. And then you have a double bond, and this double bond make totally a curve. So that is unsaturate, this is saturate. See, can you see? The U as unsaturated, U as unsaturated. Okay, anyhow, so let's keep going. So here we have the saturate and the saturate. You know the cis and trans. When how how we how we can make trans? Trans can be made it. Trans can be made it by hydrogenation, right? Hydrogenation. What it means hydrogenation? Hydrogenation means that we are taking out some. This is the uh, this is uh, cis, cis. So we are taking what is doing that trans. This is actually saturated and saturated fat, and we are going to make that saturate a little bit into uh, into unsaturated fat. So we have here hydrogen. Take out this hydrogen, and then you have the hydrogenation to put the hydrogen in the opposite side. That is going to be trans. And what is happening here? That the oil become more stable and it's going to last longer. So hydrogenation, if you don't see hydrogenation in your, in your, in your uh, uh, label, it doesn't mean that they don't have it. Yes, they have it, less than zero. If they have 0 0.5 or less, it's legal not to put it, to put, it's legal to put zero trans. Crisco, olive oil, never again. This, what, what is this guy is the, uh, I don't know how it uh, looks like butter or, or doesn't look bad. How is the name of this? Well, anyhow. All right, so we have the seed and the fat. So let's keep going. So we talk about cholesterol, oh, vitamin D. By the way, I want to ask, I want to tell you this, please. Cholesterol, cholesterol, cholesterol is needed for sex hormones, right? We need aldosterone. It's going to be used for uh, cortisol and vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D, vitamin D. Vitamin D is, is formed based on cholesterol. All right, so another thing that I will, uh, we will talk another time is the, actually the, the prostaglandins. Prostaglandins are uh, actually the local messengers. 
What I want you to remember about the prostaglandins are they are local messengers. Local messenger, where they are. They are in every single cell of the body. In every single cell. Every single cell is in the body. If you have pain, if you have inflammation, if you have clotting for to, to heal a, a wound, if you have uh, mucus produced in the stomach or in the in the mouth, all this guy, pain, who is the local messenger, who is the one who informs to the, to the nervous system, the, the prostaglandins, pain, inflammation, clotting, new, uh, uh, mucus. The free radicals, what are the free radicals? Free radicals is, in conclusion, to make it simple, is what is making us older, is what is making us young, uh, I mean, uh, aging with the time, faster. So if we have more free radicals, you're going to actually make the regeneration of the tissue go faster. And remember, remember when you have this regeneration, you have these chromosomes, right? And the chromosomes, when you are in stress, especially when you, have, you can have free radicals in that situation, the telomeres are going to be shorter next time. And that means that it's related to aging. Okay, free radicals. So we don't want free radicals. So what, everything that is red, bright, purple, yes, purple, yes, uh, but very bright colors are going to be high content of free radicals. What is a free radical? Is an excess of uh, uh, extra electrons, extra electrons. Extra electrons can lead into, into uh, damage of the, of the cells. One thing I want to go here is the lipid oxidation. One of the most common and um, most common forms to create uh, 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 free radicals is be with the lipid oxidation. I'm not talking about beta oxidation, okay? Lipid oxidation, so beta oxidation is, is produce acetyl-CoA, but lipid oxidation, when it's in excess, is actually reacting with the oxygen, and these oxygen plus flat, fat, sorry, are going to produce free radicals. Okay, so let's keep going. Uh, all right, so the heart. Okay, the heart. The heart, I'm going to have a video uh, that is going to take like two, three minutes. I hopefully uh, we have still time. So it's 11.40. Uh, somebody, if do you want a break? Two minutes or we can continue. If there is no any suggestion in the question polls in the chart, in the screen, I will continue. All right, so here we have the heart, we have the pericardium, and the pericardium are going to have this membrane. You see the pericardium? The pericardium. Pericardium is the double layer membrane. Double layer membrane. Double layer membrane. We have here, this is one uh, layer, and this is black, another layer here. So this is the fluid, 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 pericardial fluid. So this is the visceral, this is the heart. And this is one of the visceral layer. And this is the parietal layer. Parietal layer. And this inside, between parietal and visceral, we have fluid. That is the pericardial fluid. Okay? All right, so the three layers of the heart are going to be the, the what? The uh, endocardium. We have endocardium, endocardium. We have the myocardium. And we have the epicardium, epicardium. Epicardium is the, it belongs to the heart, right? All right. So here we have, we have some, um, uh, some view of the heart. We have, first of all, here we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava that drain into the right atrium. In the right atrium is going to pass through the uh, tricuspid valve and is going to be in the right ventricle. We got it? So now, sometimes I ask, they are going to be, be asked, what structure is between the right atrium and the right ventricle? And the answer is the tricuspid valve. If they, if they ask you, what is the structure between the left atrium and the left ventricle, what should be the answer? Is the mitral valve or bicuspid valve? Now, let's see. What if I ask you, uh, what if I ask you that, uh, um, 
what if I ask you what the structure is? Listen, pay attention, the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery. What the structure is in between the pulmonary artery and the right ventricle? And the answer is the pulmonary artery valve, this guy. So that is in between. Again, if I ask you what is in between the left ventricle and the aorta, can you see the aorta coming all the way here, right? The aorta is here. So between the aorta and the left ventricle, what structure we have? We have the pulmonary artery. No, sorry. So we have the uh, aortic aortic valve. Uh, so right now, remember aortic valve, aortic valve, and the pulmonary artery valve are semi semi lunar valves. So that is the generic name for these two guys. Okay, all right, so let's keep going. All right, so uh, just remember here we have, uh, remember, so everything that is coming in, into the heart, in, into the heart, are going to be veins. Everything that is vessels coming out are going to be arteries, are going to be arteries. And here we have vein this vein coming in, coming in, then go to the right ventricle, then pass the, the what? The tricuspid valve, go to the right ventricle, and they're coming out. Out is the pulmonary artery. See, out artery in veins. This guy go to the lungs, another branch go to the lungs, and they come back through the, after the oxygenation happened, they are going to come back to the left atrium, and that actually produce that they are going to pass the bicuspid valve, they go to the left ventricle, and they go to the aorta, all the way to the to the body. Okay. All right. So I'm highlighting because it's impossible to do all the ten lectures that you can tell, right? So I'm trying just to. Uh, uh, oh, one thing I want to go here is in addition I'm going to uh, have take advantage of this. We have we have atero, atherosclerosis. Atherosclerosis. So you are champions in medical terminology and we are going to have atero means plaque or deposit or deposit of what? Of, of cholesterol. Esclerosis, scleros means what? Hardening. Hard. Hardening. Okay? The process to produce atherosclerosis or deposits of cholesterol is going to be called the atherogenesis. Okay? All right, so uh, just remember one syndrome I would like you to remember is the metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is everything that is the McDonald's, the fried chicken, the uh, uh, sodas. Okay? So metabolic syndrome is going to make you have in, in the time high levels of cholesterol, high levels of what? Of sodium in blood, high levels of glucose, and that is the mother of atherosclerosis, high sodium, hypertension, and glucose, diabetes. Very common, right? Very common. So that is coming from the metabolic syndrome. You can recognize a person with big belly. No, well, too exaggerate. So, so big belly and small arms and uh, actually it's what we call central obesity central obesity all right so let's keep going and that is can totally changeable in our uh, habits just diet okay or actually normal 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 um, uh, I mean balanced diet okay so let's talk this the cell I'm not going to talk about organelles uh, I'm not going to ask that the only thing I want you to remember about this is, first of all, the process of protein, all the steps, okay, how the proteins are going to be formed. Uh, actually, I want you to remember about the mitochondria. The mitochondria is an organelle that is going to uh, go, they're going to have the Krebs cycle, right? The Krebs cycle, Krebs cycle, that is important. All right, so membrane transport. So let's make it simple here and straight. So here we have the simple diffusion. I'm going to make another another stuff. All 
Okay, so let's make it very, uh, very simple. We have simple dif diffusion. We have uh, transportation, transportation, membrane transportation, membrane transportation. We have for one side the simple, the sorry, the uh, what is the um, passive? Sorry, passive. And the other one is the uh, um, active. The passive we have simple diffusion. And I do this because I want you to remember the simple diffusion is what? Gas exchange. We have the facilitate diffusion. Who is that? Glucose. We have the osmosis. Who is that? All cells. Especially the transport. So is the osmosis is the pass of, pass of water through the membrane, right? And in order to dilute it, the according, remember we have isotonic, hypotonic, and, uh, and uh, hypertonic, right? Active is going to be the sodium potassium potassium pump. Remember we was talking about the chart, remember this chart? In the chart we was having here sodium, calcium, potassium chloride, sodium, potassium chloride, uh, pot, uh, sodium, calcium, potassium and chloride, so I'm going to repeat that another time, but this is actually the basic function of the nerves, the muscles that are going to happen. Without this, we cannot have it. So how is that happening? With a sodium potassium pump. Sodium potassium pump. Sodium is, uh, they are going to use energy to bring the sodium inside the cell. That's why it's so important, this active sodium potassium pump. Okay? All right, so let's keep going. If there is question again, please, I'm ready to answer anytime. So we have the gas exchange. We talk about that. Facilitate diffusion. We talk about that. The osmosis, active transportation, protein pump. Please, protein pump. What is protein? So I'm talking about protein, sodium, sorry, sodium, potassium, potassium pump. So what does it mean? That this is a protein, this is a protein who is going to take the sodium and the protein is going to take the potassium. The sodium is going in and the potassium is going out, for example. So who is this protein pump? Protein pump, for example, the one who carry the sodium and potassium. There is many others, but actually I want just to remember that important. It's so important, this protein pump. All right, so here we have again, please, here we have our salt. This is extracellular, outside the cell intracellular inside the cell so we have the here's the membrane this is intra this is extra what we have outside is salt mostly salt that where is blood that's what i put it like like red like blood it's, it's running in our in the in the circulatory system and what is common the sodium and chloride sodium is cation remember cation cation right cation and anion is chloride so sodium easy to remember nothing complicated and inside we have the potassium and the phosphate remember the chart that we was mentioning right sodium calcium potassium chloride right so that is the what we call the depolarization the repolarization right so i i'm talking about this because we already talk about that so i want to put everything together so you can uh, ap apply all your information in this. so phagocytosis is the process where you can see here the uh, this is the synapses synapses of the uh, uh, of, of nerves so this is for example the pre synaptic pre synaptic this is the post synaptic this is the terminal axon this is terminal axon and this is dendrite that is going to communicate to the next neuron so we have here the mitochondria, etc., the neurotransmitters release. This is the pre, uh, pre synapsis. This is the synaptic gap. This is the synaptic gap and the post synaptic. So that is going to produce, look at this, phagocytosis, endocytosis, exocytosis. In this case, you are looking exocytosis. They are going to take the neurotransmitter outside of the cell. And that is going to, exo means outside. Endocytosis is the opposite when the when the 
they are going to engulf. It's going to, for example, a white cell. A white cell are going to, this is the bacteria, and the white cell, what it's doing is engulf the bacteria and eat it. At the end, you have the bacteria inside. All right, so this is memory transport. We talk about that. All right, so here in the respiratory system, number one. First of all, what I want you to have clear is what is pharynx. 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 Pharynx is going to be the nasopharynx. 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 We have the oropharynx here. Oropharynx. Oropharynx. And here, from can you see here? This is the, from here to here, is going to be the laryngopharynx. Laryngopharynx. So all our, our laryngopharynx, oropharynx, nasopharynx. All this is the pharynx. And the pharynx, we have the larynx. And the larynx is the, if you see, please, we are going to talk about the upper respiratory tract. Extremely important. Upper In the upper respiratory tract, we have the nasal, the oro, and the laryngo. So can you see all this is the larynx up to here? Below here is not anymore the upper respiratory tract. This is the trachea. Trachea. So the upper respiratory tract is going to end in the in the larynx, including the whole larynx. And below that is the trachea. So the trachea is not the upper. So this is from trachea to the lungs is going to be the lower respiratory tract. All right, so we have the our friend the epiglottis. Here we have the oropharynx, the food is coming this way, is this way, but then you swallow epigl oh, okay, so we so you the food is coming this way, this way, this way, this way, and then you swallow. When you swallow, these epiglottis, that is cartilage, are going to here we have the respiratory tract, and below under behind here is the, the esophagus. So if you swallow something, this is the tongue. If you swallow something, this is the teeth, the pal uh, the palate, etc the uvula, and this is a, the food coming. So this, obviously, we want them to close, right? So they are going to close and make the food pass to the esophagus. So that is about the, uh, the, uh, the, the esophagus, okay? All right, so then we are going to continue. We are going to continue with the, uh, with the alveolar. So what is the functional unit of the of the lungs is going to be the assigning, but I want just you to remember the uh, the um, alveolus. Alveolus, okay. The alveolus is actually the one who we have another 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 uh, membrane that is the pleura, and the pleura the pleura has double layer visceral and parietal. What is the the parietal is close to the wall of the chest with the ribs and all that. And the visceral is the one who is close to the lung. But in between these two layers, there is the pleural space. Between this and this. No, between this and that. This is the parenchyma. Parenchyma remembers tissue, right? Parenchyma. Remember parenchyma? We talk about parenchyma tissue. Parenchyma is the same to say tissue. It's the same to say tissue. Okay, so that is about the pleural. Okay? We have the diaphragm. The diaphragm we have the diaphragm is the diaphragm is the muscle that mostly we use during inspiration. And the uh, and the ribs, the intercostal muscles that we eat in rib in uh, chilies, intercostal muscles are going to be for exhalation. Okay, so that exhalation. Okay. All right, so nemotora, that's pathology, is med search, so not review. So let's fin we finish already with these uh, uh, two lectures. We are going to do the next one that are going to be, uh, you remember that the last lectures are the most commonly coming. So I, I hope that you can still attend it. Okay, so we have nutrients and processing and metabolism. Okay, so here we have a cellular metabolism. We already talked about that. Is the sum of chemical reactions, right? All the anabolic and catabolic. 
All right. So one thing I want to always remember here, please. Oh, I cannot write out anything here. All right. So let me see. All right. So I want to ask you, oh, I want you to tell me that definitely something that I've been asking many times, and it's, it's okay to make a mistake, uh, but definitely uh, we need to remember that even in other other uh, uh, modules, cholesterol, please, cholesterol, cholesterol. Uh, let me see. Let's make it. Let's make it green. Let's make it green. So we have cholesterol. Cholesterol, please, is not used for energy. No energy. Okay. Cholesterol is not used for energy. No cholesterol for energy. Cholesterol, no energy. Cholesterol is not used for energy. Okay? So that is very important. Okay. So we have the ATPs, and we have, uh, let's make a small summary here, just to make a shortcut. Here we have the, the carbs, carbohydrates, and here we have the, um, the carbohydrates, and here we have the monosaccharides. Remember the monosaccharides, the glucose fructose, galactose, they don't say disaccharides. They are not going to be absorbed. What is going to be absorbed are the monosaccharides, and these guys are mono, are monosaccharides. Uh, monosaccharides, are monosaccharides, mono, okay? So then we have here, the, uh, they're going to go to pyruvic acid, forget about this, pyruvic acid, then acetocoe. Can you see this double arrow? is going to be reversible, okay? So here we have, and here we have, for example, you eat carbohydrates. You eat in carbohydrates, so what is happening? You need to store your glycogen first. So you use your energy. So whatever you need to use, you are running or something, you're studying, you need to use ATP from, cholesterol, from glucose. All right, so then you satisfy all your needs, but you're still eating candies, sugars. And what happened? They are going to replenish the, uh, the pool of glycogen that you have where in your liver and in your muscles. That is where it's going to be mostly located the glycogen. And the glycogen from glucose to glycogen is going to be the glycogenesis, the origin of the glycogen. Glycogenesis. Glycogenesis. Okay? So if you see that, that is the glycogenesis. All right, so here we have, now, let's suppose that you uh, are going to, uh, uh, you are in diet, you're dieting. If you're dieting, uh, they are going to use all your carbohydrates, your sugars, but you don't want to eat sugars, right? Because you want to lose weight. But what happened now? the body start to use the storage of glycogen. What is glycogen? Please, a carbohydrate. Glycogen is carbohydrate. Glycogen is a carbohydrate. And glycogen is going to turn into, into glucose again through the glycogenolysis. Glycogenolysis. So glycogen, glycogen lysis. So it's going to cut down or break down the glycogen into glucose. Then the glucose, what happened? Glucose entered into pyruvic acid and ATPs. You are still eating carbohydrates. And when you're still eating carbohydrates, they are going to uh, have a lot of pyruvic acid, a lot of pyruvic acid. This pyruvic acid are going to turn into acetocoA, in acetocoA, in acetocoA. This aceto pyruvic to acetocoA needs oxygen. So when you are doing exercises, extenuating exercises, oxygen cannot actually turn the pyruvic acid in acetyl-CoA. So what happened? The pyruvic acid in lack of oxygen, because all the glycolysis can be done without oxygen, they are going to start producing lactic acid. Lactic acid. They are going to produce the lactic acid. Lactic acid. Okay? All right. And that lactic acid is going to uh, produce few ATPs and the body said okay we need some energy because you keep doing exercises but we cannot burn because there's poor oxygen amount so lactic acid is going to need less oxygen but produce less less ATPs 
and the accumulation of this is going to take about two to three days, uh, reabsorption of this in the cells, especially in the muscles, taking about two, three days. So that means your pain after exercises are going to last that time, two to three days. So it's recommended to do two or three days generally exercises in a week. All right, so now you're still keeping taking sugar. You cannot stop eating sugar. So you still, you're going to have acetyl-CoA in huge amounts. And, uh, and that is, they're going to enter into the Krebs cycle. Remember, you don't create. You don't create more ATPs than the ones that you need. Okay? So if you already satisfy all your ATPs, what happens? The acetyl-CoA is going to enter in this cycle. We call that lipogenesis. So the carbohydrates are going to start forming what? Uh, fat, more fat. Okay? So now, Let's go over the fat. So let's suppose you're on diet. You don't eat, uh, you don't eat carbohydrates at all. Uh, what happened? You're going to use first of your glycogen. When you deplete your glycogen after seven, four to seven days, right? I say ten, but four to seven days is what they said in the textbook. Four to seven days is what is taking you to uh, comp to uh, use all your glycogen, and then after that, what are you going to use? Your fats. And when you're using the fats they are going to be used as fa fatty acids, fatty acids, no triglycerides, no cholesterol, no cholesterol, no triglycerides, they cannot. They are, fatty acids can actually be, fat, uh, triglycerides can lead into fatty acids by hydrolysis, as we already mentioned before. So the fatty acids, they are going to enter in, uh, they are going to transform in acetyl-CoA when you have the beta oxidation the beta oxidation, beta oxidation. Beta oxidation are going to lead into acetyl-CoA. The acetyl-CoA is going to turn into the Krebs cycle to produce ATP. How many for molecule? 180 ATP for molecule of, of fatty acids. For molecule of, of glucose, you're going to form 36 ATP and two ATPs from the, from the, uh, from the, the what? From the uh, glycolysis. Okay, so this is glycolysis. Okay, so let's keep going. So let's move. Uh, let's keep going. Okay, so just a moment. Okay, per perfect. So now uh, here we have the proteins, and the proteins are amino acids, and the amino acids mostly what they are going to do is to primary is primary is doing what? Primary is going to do the uh, uh, building building tissue, right? Producing hormones, producing enzymes, right? Repairing tissue. That is what is doing the proteins. All right. So, in case there is two situations, or you eat a lot of proteins alone, or you don't you don't have proteins in your diet, or actually, uh, um, that is uh, what happened with these proteins when you have excess or defect of proteins. All right, so when you eat too much proteins, when you eat too much proteins, what happens? You remember when we eat too much carbohydrates, what can happen? If you eat too much carbohydrates, you're going to end into more fat. Right? And period, that's it, what it's going to do. Carbohydrates to fat. Okay, let's put it here. Carbohydrates to fat. The fat, when you have excess of fat, what is going to do? They are going, there's a pathway to go to proteins? No, pro fat cannot produce proteins. There is a pathway that can lead into glucose, carbohydrates? No, there is no. So fat cannot lead into sugar. But fat can lead into more fat. Fat, more fat. Okay? Fat and fat and fat. Okay? So then we have proteins. The proteins actually is, is more, more complicated or more complex, I would say. So the proteins... They, the proteins are going to go in three levels. They go to the pyruvic acid, they go to the acetyl-CoA, or they can, can go to the Krebs cycle. So if they go to the Krebs cycle, the proteins, that is going to produce ATPs. But guess what? These ATPs, these ATPs are, are going to be uh, uh, created from proteins when totally we finish all the carbohydrates in our body, when we finish all the fats, and lipids in our bodies. Okay, so that is one proteins are going proteins so are going to produce ATPs, 
they can lead into ATPs. They can lead into ATPs. They, if they go to acetyl-CoA, the acetyl-CoA, they can go. If you have excess of acetyl-CoA, excess of acetyl-CoA can do two pathways, right? One here and another one here. So they can produce ATPs or they can produce fat. So ATPs, so proteins can produce fat, ATPs. And the other one is the pyruvic acid. The pyruvic acid, they can go reversible. They can go and produce glucose. Okay, so that is the summary about this guy. So fat, if you eat too much fat, a lot of fat, you're going to accumulate fat. If you eat a, a carbohydrates, they are going to accumulate the glycogen first. And when glycogen is a, a carbohydrate, right? Carbohydrate. And if you keep eating fat, you're going to, uh, carbohydrate, you eat, you're going to transform into fat. All right, so that is about this portion. So just remember one thing about the digestion. Digestion uh, uh, is GI tract. We have ingestion. Digestion is breaking down, is breaking down, breaking down. We have absorption, absorption, distribution. Distribution, please, is not GI tract. Distribution is not. Distribution is arteries and veins. It's a part of the circulatory system. Once the nutrients are in the intestine here inside, they are going to be absorbed by arteries and veins. And these arteries and veins are not digest GI tract. Okay? So that's why the distribution is part of the uh, uh, assimilation of the nutrients, but distribution is part of the G of the vascular system. Okay, so that is about that. Um, so we talk about glycolysis already, about the Krebs cycle, the super favorite. Okay, so anaerobic reactions. When you have anaerobic reactions, you're talking about what? Write down this, please. Anaerobic reactions is the glycolysis. Uh, glycolysis. Anaerobic are going to be the glycolysis. Glycolysis. And we have the aerobic. Where is the guy? Uh, aerobic. Aerobic. Where is the aerobic? Okay, so, all right. Just aerobic. There is aerobic. Aerobic is going to be, for example, who? Krebs cycle. Who? Beta oxidation. So those are the important ones. Krebs cycle and beta oxidation are going to use oxygen. Okay? All right. So anaerobic, no oxygen. Who is the glycolysis? Just remember the gluconeogenesis. Remember, gluconeogenesis is proteins turns into uh, sugar or glucose. Fermentation is a, actually they are going to obtain some alcohol that can lead into uh, some calories for the body, but fermentation is when you have mixing a mold, a mold, a mold, uh, I mean, yes, a mold plus a plus sugar and no oxygen. There is no oxygen. So all these are going to produce some ATPs, heat, and they can produce some, uh, some what? Some uh, uh, ATPs and some alcohol. That's how we can, people learn how to do these uh, wines, okay, or alcohol in general. All right, so digestive system, we already talked about that. So uh, it's getting more closer to what our classes, uh, the last classes we have. The microbiome of the intestine is very important. They are, they are going to be like about one-fifth of the court of a tennis, a tennis court the area. So that is a big amount of absorption. So remember our intestines is going to measure about 20 feet long. And we need that length because the absorption is going to be more effective. More time of absorption, more uh, more nutrients into your system, right? Okay. Uh, first of all, I want, give me a second, I want to check who is who is uh, attending, who is not uh, okay, thank you. Thank you for everybody here. Oh, hello. 
Uh, Kimberly, you raise your hand. Okay. Uh, there's many, many more uh, welcome. Sasha Jimenez. Nasli. Mariam. She was on the beginning. Hi, Hebrew Lassi. How are you? Gladys. Okay. And Amelia. I see you. Yes, coming. Thank you. Okay. So let's keep going. So we are actually, we are going to use about half an hour more because I need to do some other uh, uh, highlights. All right, so that is the GI track. I think that is really um, not uh, uh, complicated. So, and if you notice, we already did this lecture eight. So that's why I was using the first lectures in order to make shortcuts and make a review, a comprehensive review about midterm. All right, so urinary system, again, urinary system. So remember here we have the nephron functional unit, one million each kidney. The nephron, the nephron is going to uh, have here uh, uh, the Bowman's capsule, the glomeruli, the proximal convoluted tubule, the Henle's loop, the distal convoluted tubule up to here. Can you see here? Up to here is all this is the nephron only. All this is the nephron. A little piece coming into the pyramid is okay, but the one, the only one who go all the way is the collecting duct. And this collecting duct is not part of the nephron. There is a reason for the Henry's duct. You will explain it in the physiology next, next module. But if you see here, all these pyramids are having these rays. And these rays are the collecting ducts, collecting ducts, collecting ducts collecting ducts, this collecting duct. So here we have the artery, and the artery, the renal artery, is going to divide in many branches. There are many branches is going to bring the blood towards the cortex, 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 and medulla, cortex, cortex. In the cortex, they are going to reach, one of the small vessels are going to reach the nephron, and the nephron filtrate the blood, and the filtration, like a colander and a spaghetti, they are going to bring the urine and, and the urine is going to be fluid reabsorbed by the distal, proximal, and Henle's loop. So the water is going to be reabsorbed in that area. So then the remnants, that is about two, uh, 40 drops of urine every hour, they are going to get into the collecting duct from the whole kidney. It's going to produce 40 drops. Can you imagine 40 drops of, of water every hour, every, every minute, sorry, every minute, every hour now every minute and they are going to go into the pelvis this is the pelvis all oh, this is the pelvis pelvis this is the pelvis and the urine go then to the ureters pelvis ureters and the urinary bladder and the urethra okay so let's keep going so that is about the kidneys so uh, remember the functions right fresh filtration what else is going to be reabsorption excretion secretion secretion of what bicarbonate secretion of uh, hydrogen that is going to be in the in the ph uh, uh, the uh, arterial uh, base balance so this is the ph is going to participate in the ph secretion and hormones hormones that we need to remember is the uh, erythropoietin erythro erythro ah, erythro Poetin. What is erythropoietin? Erythropoietin is an hormone that stimulates the red bone marrow. And the red bone marrow produce what? The red blood cells produce white cells and produce platelets. Okay? All right. So, and we have another thing, the vitamin D. The vitamin D is going to be activated in the kidney. All right, so that is about the kidneys. Uh, all right, so we finish this part. Let's go to the uh, last two lectures, nine and ten, and that is from the previous previous class. So then after that, we are going to make a very nice uh, ten minutes brief and uh, debrief, and we are going to finish. All right, so we have the metabolic uh, in and out. You already know we was talking about diets and all that. 
So we have the ketone bodies. So talking about the ketone bodies. So ketone bodies is going to, uh, let me go here, here. Okay, ketone bodies are coming, uh, ketone bodies are coming from, uh, ketone bodies are coming from fat, sorry, here this way, fat, or they can come from, they can come from uh, proteins. That is what I want you to remember. Uh, one, one, one else, when is going to happen this? When is going to happen when, for example, the patient, the patient do not eat, don't have sources of carbohydrates. Carbohydrates, no carbohydrates. Or it can be two things, right? The patient don't eat or the patient is di diabetic, right? The same thing for proteins. So the proteins I start to metabolize into ATPs when you don't have fats, when you don't have any carbohydrates. So the proteins are going to have this production of ketone bodies. Ketone bodies is the same, ketone bodies is the same to say ketoacidosis. It's the process of having a lot of ketoacids in the body. It's the same to say ketosis, ketosis. We have another word is the keto, uh, ketonuria, ketonuria. Ketonuria means that ketone bodies are so high in blood that they are going to find in the urine. So all these terms, keto, uh, ketone bodies, keto, ketoacidosis, ketosis. Ketosis is high level, high concentration in blood of ketone bodies. And what is this ketone body is doing? What I want you to remember is that these guys can lead into ATPs that are very slow, a very high cost because the pH on the blood is going to go down and that produce acidosis, acidosis. And you don't want to have acidosis. The blood general is going to be uh, a little bit al alkaline. And the problem with this uh, diet, remember the Atkins diet, right? Just full proteins. What is going to do is giving you a lot of acidosis. This acidosis, uh, uh, actually uh, the problem is that as the keto bodies are going to probably use energy. You don't have carbohydrates to, to have uh, NATPs, so you're using your ketone bodies. And all the body use ketone bodies, a high price. Why? Because the ketone bodies cannot be used by the brain. The brain cannot turn keto bodies into ATPs. So you can tell ketone bodies elevated in patients who are starving for many, uh, for uh, uh, for example, uh, many days just eating that type of, pro of uh, diet, Atkins, and they start to have some confusion, some uh, 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 changes on the uh, uh, levels of consciousness of the patient, right? All right, so let's keep going. Okay, glucogenesis. So it's the formation of glycogen, right? From where? From glucose. So what is what is glu uh, glycogen? Glucogen is can you see all these glucose coming together? Glucose, all these dots are glucose. They have millions, millions of them. And all these are going to form a big structure that is called glycogen. That is what is a glu uh, a glycogen. Glycogen is the accumulation of many thousands, millions of molecules of what? Of glucose. Okay, so let's keep going. So we talk about, all right, so I think we, we have plenty of what we I was trying to give it to you today. So let me, let me finish this part. Okay, so BMR, BMI is different, right? Okay, well, so what is BMR? Oh, so, okay, so please tell me, what is uh, BMI? BMI is the body mass index, right? So that is going to categorize if you are undernourished, you are uh, uh, normal, you are, are overweight, obese, or uh, morbid obesity, correct? Okay, they, they have the BMR. And the BMR is going to be what? Is all the energy that you use when you, is, even when you sleep, all your basic, basic functions of your body. 
that you cannot stop, not even one second, breathing, respiratory tract, uh, re breathing, the cardiovascular, heart beating. So those are not possible. So that is the minimum energy that you are going to use. Okay, so for example, if you want to save uh, electricity, what you're going to do? You're going to use just the, the more basic lights in your house. So, so that energy is what is happening to in your body. So BMR. Okay, and what is BMR? What is the application of BMR? Is the TDEE. So first of all, you can calculate your uh, BMI, right? That is something you, to categorize where you are. Then you can calculate your BMR. There is a formula that we given. And if you add to the BMR the uh, activity factor, you have the TDEE. So that is the amount of energy that you're going to use during the day. You can make tables and cards on that and actually uh, uh, control the amount of food that we are having intake that day. Okay, so this is our margarita there. So let's keep going. The nervous system. Okay. All right, so please, I want just to show you some pictures that are really, and I'm going to, at the end, I'm going to, uh, I, will, I left to the end the uh, summary of the summary, but I want just to go over a few things here with you. Okay, so solution, dissolve. All right, so let's go directly to our summary of the, of, of the summary, and I'm going to just, just a moment. Okay, here. All right, so everybody pay attention. We are, uh, here we have the, uh, the six dimensions. Okay, what is the six, six dimensions? Six dimensions. Very quick, very quick. I know that we have a short time. So we have uh, health, health, uh, healthy, healthy, health or, and wellness, right? Okay. And when talking about healthy and wellness, uh, we have, they are going to be the physical is, um, physical is going to be about the health. And the wellness is going to be the remnants. So all together, that is going to give you the health, health and well, and wellness of, of your health, right? So healthy and wellness, right? So you need to remember what is the definition of, of physical, social, a spiritual, open eyes, open ears, social, open eyes, open ears, okay? So those are the things that we want to know. The cellulose here, the cellulose is a fiber. So fiber is a cellulose coming from the Caesar salad, okay, or any salad. And they are going to do have these uh, filaments. That is what is doing, going into, remember? we have into the large, in, uh, la, uh, the colon here, the colon, here's the fibers. What is coming here? Bacteria. Bacteria plus fibers are going to produce vitamin K. Vitamin K. And vitamin K is going to uh, be part of the coagulation process. So we have cellulose is non-digestible, non-digestible um, uh, polysaccharide. Okay, complex carbohydrate. Glycolysis, two ATPs, right? Cytoplasma, correct? What else? Uh, anaerobic, correct? Anaerobic uh, means oxygen. What else? We have uh, uh, pyruvic acid, right? Pyruvic acid, pyruvic acid. And what else? Is reversible reversible okay reversible all right so ATPs and ADPs so ATPs T means phosphate phosphate and phosphate first second and third here is the strongest energy a lot of energy coming out so when you get rid of this uh, uh, phosphate, you have ADP. Here's the ADP. And the ADP needs energy together in order to put another phosphate coming all the way here again to create again our, to reconstitute 
the our ATP. Okay, so let's go here. Okay, so please, uh, okay, uh, disable, the, oh, okay, well, that, was, that was a surprise, I was thinking it's going to work. Anyhow, all right, so about the heart, uh, that, that video was about the heart, um, I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't, um, some, something happened suddenly. In the, in the heart, in the heart, what I want you to remember some few things, so I'm going to be very brief on that. Uh, Okay, so the heart, we need to remember, number one, the four chambers. The upper and the lower. This is no oxygen on the right side. Uh, on the left side, we have oxygen. Everything that is coming in are veins or bring in blood. And all vessels that are taking out blood from the heart are going to be arteries. Another thing that is very high yield is going to be the bulbs. How many bulbs we have? Four. How many chambers we have? Four. Okay. So then we have the, uh, the other thing that is important is to remember the semi-lunar bulbs. Semi-lunar bulbs are going to be what? The aortic bulb and the pulmonary artery bulb. So all of these are semilunar bulbs. So semilunar, what is aortic bulb? A semilunar bulb. What is pulmonary artery bulb? Semilunar bulb. What is aortic bulb and pulmonary bulb? Semilunar bulbs. So and actually it's not, it's easy, it's not actually uh, to make any confusion to anyone. Okay, so uh, now in the left in the left atrium in the so what vessels coming in coming out right so that is what we want to uh, to remember uh, sorry i need to finish it okay so we have in the left atrium so that's very simple. Let's make it simple. Simple. Left, uh, right ventricle. Right ventricle. Who is coming in? IVC and superior vena cava. What is coming in into the left? Uh, sorry, this is the right atrium. I apologize. Right atrium. This is the right atrium right atrium okay right atrium what is coming in is going to be the ivc and is the, the superior vena cava in the left atrium what is coming in are going to be the four pulmonary veins pulmonary veins pulmonary veins okay then we have the right ventricle what is coming out in the right ventricle is coming out the pulmonary artery in the uh, left ventricle, what is coming out is the aorta. What is the communication, what the structure are between the left atrium and the, and the, and the what? And the left ventricle, the, tri the bicuspid valve. What is in between the left, uh, the right atrium and the right ventricle is that tricuspid valve. What is in between? What is in between the left ventricle and the uh, aorta? What is in between the right in between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery? In between the left ventricle, you have time to think already. Between the left ventricle and the aorta, we are going to have the the aortic valve, aortic valve, and between the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery, we have the pulmonary artery valve. Okay, so that is a way that is going to be approximately going to be asked. Okay, so please just remember that this is an over uh, is a comprehensive review. 
but I had yield in all the topics that probably are going to be possible. So or, or, hormonal control homeostasis, homeostasis, we have uh, uh, 10 more slides. Uh, homeostasis is the internal balance, right, between the endocrine and the nervous system. So you already, we already talked, remember all the examples that we was giving in class. About the pH, remember please the pH, what is pH? pH means pro, uh, uh, power of hydrogen, power of hydrogen. The more hydrogen you have, the, the more acid, the more acid, the lower the pH. So look at this, acidic, what is the more, uh, no, the number of more, more acid is zero. Two is uh, chloridic acid, is the stomach. Six is the urine. Seven is going to be the water. Twelve is going to be pancreatic use. Okay, so if you remember here, the pancreatic use are going to contain all these hormones that we was mentioning before, lipase, protease, and amylase because they are coming from the pancreas, they're coming from the pancreas, they are and they're under very alkaline environment, 12, they are not active. So they need to go out from the pancreas into the duodenum, and is in the duodenum where the uh, conjunction with the chyme that is acid, acid 2 for the stomach, and pH 12 of the pancreas, they are going to combine and neutralize in about 7 pH where the lipase and protease amylase, they are going to be activated. Only they are going to be activated when they found a more neutral environment. Okay, so let's keep going. So here we have the pseudo-stratified epithelium. Here we have the goblet cell. This goblet cell at the beginning was like this guy, the, the columnar cell, but they differentiate. And they, you can see the cilia, and this mucus is coming from the goblet cells. Connective tissue, you already know, we were talking about the uh, liquid, right? We are talking about the other one is the uh, heart. We have the fibrous, and we have the uh, areolar or soft, right? So liquid is blood, soft is the areolar, areolar fat, heart is bone and cart cartilage and fibrous are tendons and ligaments so don't forget that please active site of the enzyme this is the active site of the enzyme active site of the enzyme competition and no competition no competitive are going to be for example we have uh, let's see Competitive inhibition, competitive, so something that is going to inhibit the reaction is when you have some another substrate like this, and they have similar shape as I draw in here. See, this have this is different from this, and they are going to have differences. So what is going to happen? This is coming here and is blocking, so the reaction is not happening. And the no competitive, no competitive, no competitive is they have here another receptor, some receptor here. And when, you, when this is what is what we want, that this has a neural receptor, and there is something that is matching here. And when that match, that is going to change the configuration of the active site. So the, the active site is going to have different shape. So it's not, it's, it's not competing at all with the other substrate, but what it's doing is just a, a blocking the, uh, the option in order to get uh, uh, to activate the active site because this active site is totally changed of of uh, 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 shape. Okay, so here we have. Please, I want you to see that this is the cerebrum, 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 another cerebrum, and here we have some guy trying to hold each other. So this is the corpus callosum, the corpus callosum. Corpus callosum is going to bring together the uh, the two cerebrums. Okay, the two cerebrums. They are going to actually communicate. You have some idea here? You have some idea? All right, so this idea is going to transfer to the other part of the brain. And they are going to share, they are going to communicate information. And who, where is passing this information? They are not jumping. They are going to pass through the corpus callosum. 
uh, passing through. The it's the bridge that is going to be used, the two hemispheres, in order to share information. Same here for the vermis. So this is the cerebellum. And the cerebellum is going to have this portion. It's called the vermis. Vermis is the connection between the two hemispheres. So they are going to share information. So, so you can tell your right side of your body knows what is doing the left side. So you, you, you don't do different things. You are coordinating right and left, right? You don't do something and your other half of your body doing something else. No, right? So they are going to coordinate things. So macronutrients and uh, uh, micronutrients, you need to remember about the macro are carbohydrates, lipids, and proteins. Um, micro, micronutrients, micro, micronutrients are going to be, micronutrients are going to be the uh, vitamins, the minerals, okay? And the water is not, the water is apart, right? So we have water, macro, and micronutrients. Okay, so here we have the kidney. So uh, we have seven more slides. So here we have, what is this? This is the cortex, cortex, cortex. What is this? Pyramids, pyramids. What is this? What is this? This is the pelvis. What is this? This is the ureter. Where, where here is going to enter the renal artery, the renal uh, exit, the renal vein. They're going to give blood supply to the glomerulus, etc., etc. Collecting ducts, collecting ducts in each pyramid. How many pyramids you have in this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's about eight to ten pyramids. What we have in it. this is an specimen. Okay, passive active transportation, diffusion, we have gas exchange. Facilitate diffusion is the glucose. And the active transportation is going to be the sodium, potassium, ATPase, because they use energy. We have the phagocytosis, phagocytosis. Okay, excellent. Here we have the regions of the abdomen. The regions of the abdomen, we have, we need to remember that. Uh, we have the right hypochondrium or hypochondriac region. What is this? Liver. Here we have the epigastric region that open, uh, take out the, uh, put up your liver. Behind is the stomach. What we have here? Mostly the stomach. In the left hypochondrium. So even though that we have a little bit of stomach, but we characterize, we call the left hypochondrium with the area where is the spleen. Don't forget about the poor spleen. Everybody forget about the spleen. All right, so it's, then we have the right lumbar or flank. Where it's coming is this is, can you imagine, this is the stomach. Look at this, it's follow follow my, my pointer, that is the uh, uh, small intestine. Then they go and reach the colon, ascending colon, here. Ascending colon because the, the, the content is going up. And then transverse colon, and then descending colon. We have the sigmoid colon and the, and the rectum. So region, the lumbar region is flank, left region, region of flank. We have the right iliac uh, uh, region or iliac, or, sorry, inguinal, inguinal region. Inguinal region is the same. What we have here, here we have the appendix. In the left iliac region or left inguinal, we have the sigmoid colon, the symbol of sigma there. And the hypogastric region, we have the uterus and the urinary bladder, the urinary bladder. All right, so any question can happen here. So I will tell you, uh, this is the umbilical region. What is above the umbilical region? Epigastric. What is to the sides of the lateral to the umbilical region? The flanks or lumbar. What is superior to the hypogastrium, the umbilical region, etc. So uh, you need to remember that. Another thing here is the intra and the extracellular, intracellular and extracellular, extracellular uh, uh, cations and anions. So chloride is here too, see? Chloride is here too. What is inside? We have potassium and phosphates, okay? So that is really important for to understand many mechanisms that is going to be especially in pharmacology. Here we have how the connections are going to happen between nerve cells. We have dendrites here. You know the dendrites. 
we have about 10,000 dendrites. From these 10,000 drain, they are going to regenerate uh, more or less according how much we study. Right? Okay. So here we have the electrical impulse is coming this way, coming this way, saltatory, because we have the myelin that is going to accelerate the transmission, like this, no like this, it's going to be jumping. And then they go into the terminal axon. Terminal axon. The terminal axon is not going to contact another nerve cell here. No, they are going to contact to the next dendrite. So if from terminal axon to dendrite. So here, for example, if you see, they are going to be terminal axon from the previous, previous nerve, terminal axon. And that is how that is going to be transmitted. We have the myelin. The, the myelin is, is myelin, as we explained at the beginning, is fat. And the myelin is produced by the Schwann cell. There is other cells that we are going to learn later. That is for the peripheral, but Schwann cells. And these Schwann cells are going to be, how many Schwann cells we have here? One, two, three, and four. So everything is individual. Covering the, it's like you have a sausage, through a stick and sausages. That is how the axon and the sausages, each sausage is a, a Schwann cell. All right, so here we have, the um, uh, remember the orange the skin and the and the seeds here we have the cortex cortex is going to contain the gray matter gray matter and uh, uh, and we have the the white matter the white matter this is under so the white matter have uh, myelin right so it means the shun cells are uh, myelin and here there is no myelin. So actually there is no cells in that gray matter. This gray matter is the one who gives orders, right? Orders. Or orders. And the white matter is going to be the messengers. Messengers. Okay. All right, so here we have the Schwann cell. Look at this. This is the axon. This is the stick of the of the on the, the sausage. So this is the stick, the axon, and this cell, look at this, is getting around. That's why they have a spiral, spiral, it's like hugging 10 times, the axon, okay? Okay, so I think that's it for today. Uh, please, on Monday, on Monday, uh, we have 30, 30, we was having 39 students. Uh, uh, thank you for everybody coming. Uh, I want to, I'm going to open microphones. If there is some questions, please, just a moment. We are just finishing. Just a moment. Okay. Let's give it time. Okay, Beth, Bianca, Kat, who else? Agustina, Amelia, Cecilia, Cinderly, Consuelo, Crystal, Debbie, Diana, Ellen. I want to tell you something at the end, please, so please don't try not to be finished almost. Gladys, Jessica. All right, so I want to ask, I want to tell you tomorrow Monday, uh, on Monday, we are going to start our our exam, midterm exam at nine o'clock. Okay, so people who need to come earlier, and you know what I mean, people who need to come early, please, are going to be in, in the school at 9 a.m. in the morning. So we can start, uh, we can arrange everything before, uh, sorry, I'm going to be, sorry, the exam is going to be at 10 o'clock, sorry, I'm not The exam is at 10 o'clock, at the time that we are going to, 10 o'clock, yes, 10 o'clock, everybody got that, right? 10 a.m. class? Yeah, a.m. class, in the a.m. class. p.m. class. All right, okay, I will explain. At night class, at night class, we are going to start 
our class normally at six o'clock. Night class, six o'clock. But we are going to do some review people who want to take, especially that, who are in mandatory tutoring, are going to come at five. Now, in the morning, in the morning, we are going to start our midterm exam at, at 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. I'm going to provide 9 a.m. in the morning mandatory tutoring for people who are under mandatory tutoring, okay? At night, at night, we are going to start the exam, the midterm, at 6 o'clock. So at night, we start the, class, the, the exam, the midterm, at 6 o'clock p.m. In the morning, we are going to start the, the midterm exam at 10 o'clock in the morning. Both groups, one hour before to start the class, we have mandatory tutoring. Those students are man, have a mandatory tutoring that hour. So to some, uh, some, uh, to come to, to me earlier, and you know what I'm saying, is uh, if you want, we want to arrange some, uh, a, some uh, uh, whatever we agree and stipulate on the rules of the school, please come a little bit early, about 9 o'clock in the morning, or at night, come a little bit early, about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. All right, so if there is any other uh, question, please let me know now. Everything is clear? You want me to repeat it? I have questions. Yes. Or ask them. No, I, uh, I, I would prefer you to ask me questions because I can ask everything. Uh, Dr. Uh, G, are you going to be asking uh, about planes, frontal, sagittal, that kind of stuff? Yes. It's going all sagittal, sagittal, sagittal is uh, sagittal, uh, parasagittals are going to be uh, important to know. Okay, very important. Sagittal, parasagittal, coronal views. I have a question about coronal. About, about what? Coronal. Is that the coronal plane? That's Yes. Is that, is that the top of the body or the front of the body? Okay. The, uh, all right, so uh, coronal cut is going to be that is going to be cutting the body in the center, okay? But when you cutting the body, how? Yeah, how? But you're going to obtain anterior and posterior. So you obtain. There's a okay. lot of interference. I can yeah, there is. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? So coronal view. So please, everybody, I open the microphone. I don't want to close microphones. All right. So. Okay, I will close and I'm going to open again. Okay, so the coronal view, coronal view is going to cut the body in anterior and posterior. If you, it's like you stand up a bagel, let's put it this way. So the bagel is, the bagel is on the, on the, on the table. Just stand up the bagel. In front is your, the nose and, and back is your back. Cut it, the bagel, and you're going to have anterior and posterior of the bagel. So that is, the coronal view. Is that clear? Okay, so I cannot hear you. Where are you? Uh, okay, so we can, I can stay for, so Bianca, Crystal, Debbie, Diana, Debbie, well, I, I'm looking for you, uh, the, the, just a moment. Yes, I'm here. Are you here? Okay, so that answers your question? I'm Crystal. Oh, Crystal. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Beth, she left. Oh, Beth, no, I she... didn't. Oh, okay, okay, I found you. All right. So tell me, uh, is that answer your question? Yes. Okay. So, all right, so bagels. All right, somebody else? Uh, Dr. G, this is San Juana. Hello, how are you? Hi, good, thank you. I wanted to ask you about the um, the glycolysis. Yes. 
the um, you said that it uh, during glycolysis you go through the pyruvic and the acetyl CoA, but that only creates thirty six ATPs or thirty eight. Really? No. Oh my God. Total, total. The the question is that's a good question. A molecule of glucose total is going to give about 38 ATPs. Okay? So okay. glucose is coming. Glucose means that it's passing through the glycolysis and the Krebs cycle. Including these two situations, they are going to produce 38 ATPs. Two in the glycolysis and 36 in the Krebs cycle. Crystal, did you exit the thing already? Sorry? Okay. Got Okay, all right. Somebody else, please. Hi, Dr. G. It's Cinder Lee. Cinder Lee, hi. Hi. Um, are there going to be any math calculations on the exam, or is that going to be bonus or extra credit on the exam? Uh, um, none of that. No extra credits, okay. no math, no, uh, no uh, uh, medical terminology. Only okay, science. Thank you. Another one, please. Uh, what about the BMI? What 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 about the, the math? What have, it's the same exam? The same the, I mean the same the same uh, rules, the same rules for the morning and for the night. I think she said BMI. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh BMI. Yes. Oh, I got it. I got, got it. Uh, BMI. I will ask about concepts. I will not make any make any calculation. Okay. 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 This is Carposa. Can I have one more question? Who who is this? Okay, go ahead. Um, at the 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 chart that's your favorite chart with the glycolysis and lipogenesis. At which division um do you can acetyl CoA turn back into pyruvic acid? Or does it no. stop at pyruvic acid for a two-way street? No, no, no. Acetocoa cannot be turned into, acid, into pyruvic acid. Not back. So it stops at pyruvic acid. That's the end point of the carbohydrate. And that's, uh, yes. Okay. No, well, not the end, because when you eat more carbohydrate, what you're going to have is much more amount of acetocoa, correct? So, Correct. And, 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 that and, will... and you don't want more fire because you don't want more energy because you're satisfied right. with the energy. So the excess of acetocoa is going to enter into the lipogenesis. Lipogenesis. So for um, all the reactions up, up to pyruvic acid are anaerobic, right? Anaerobic. That's correct. All of them. Okay, and so from the bottom of that chart, it's all it's all aerobic. Okay, that and was yes, it. And that is inside the mitochondria already. So. Okay, this is inside. I just want to draw a line on one of my that's, diagrams. That's, that's fine. I'm sorry. You said after the pyruvic acid, is is it anaerobic or or aerobic with oxygen? Pyruvic, pyruvic acid. So the glycolysis mm -hmm. is anaerobic, anaerobic, right. anaerobic, the Krebs cycle. And then after the pyruvic acid, is it without oxygen after that? No, it's with oxygen, it's yeah. aerobic, aerobic, okay. aerobic. Okay, something else? Okay, uh, Dr. Drew, you were talking about the AM, AM class and PM class. I'm, I got to get a little confused. You want us to be there in the morning? Who is this? Or just Gladys? Gladys. PM oh. class, PM. Okay, so you are, you are my class, right? Yes. Yeah, you need to come. You need to come at 6 o'clock for the exam, PM. Okay. okay. And if you want some, because I do reviews all the time for people for mm -hmm. people who are under 74, if you are not in that group, you are mm -hmm. welcome too. So it's optional for you from 5 to 6. But at 6, you start your okay. exam normally. Okay. And how long is it going to be? 
couple hours. It is going to be one hour. Uh, well, I cannot give you exactly the minutes and seconds. So uh, everybody is going to finish okay. about the one hour, hour 15 minutes. I'm not going to rush anyone unless you have more than two hours. Uh, okay? Okay. All right. Another question? Somebody else, please. I was wondering if you want me to come earlier than nine because of the review. Who is this? Jessica in your um, AM class. Oh, you're a nice so class? All together. Yeah. Yeah. Jessica Hillhouse? Who is, who is this? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Yes. Uh, please. Yes. Uh, you are very welcome to come early, please. Okay. I will see you. You're a night, night group, right? No, no. Your morning group? Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. I will be there at 9 o'clock. Yeah, we talked previously. You told me to come earlier, to start my test earlier. But yeah, exactly. 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 I'm aware of that. So what time do okay. you want to come? I'll come at 9. Okay. I will be there at 9, so we can arrange everything. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, did you say to wait online? I'm confused. No. No, we can yeah, leave. You, said you can you can leave if you want now. So I'm just waiting right. if somebody has questions. Uh, it's, uh, I want to ask you some oh. questions. Amelia. Who? Hello? Hello, yes? It's Amelia. Hi, I'm Eugene. Amelia Bola. Hi, how are you? Yes. Hi, group. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I have a question. Um, is it uh, possible that I can uh, uh -oh. review, do review again, like it's recording, I can go back and start from the, the beginning because I was late for the lecture one and two. Yeah, I will, I will do the uh, recording. Uh, probably I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to work to try to post it in the, in the, in the Moodle today. Oh, okay. So it's the first time I'm going to do so. Probably it's going to take me a little bit of time, but I will do it. Okay, I will try to. Okay, do it. is it sometime today? Yes, if that is going to appear, it's going to appear in the movie. Okay, all right. Are you gonna send us an email? Uh, yeah, yeah. As long as I put, I successful to put it. I don't know, okay. but I will try to do my best. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Hi, I have a question. What email do we use to email you? Because I have been emailing you, but I haven't received a response. This is on the forum. Forum. Forum of uh, Moodle. Good afternoon. This is uh, Rose Catherine Berlin. Is there some all multiple choice? Yes. Will there be any diagrams given? No. No diagrams. Okay, so I see we uh, satisfy all the questions. So, uh, one o'clock, we have it. I think we covered most of the topics. So, thank you so much, everybody, to uh, enjoy uh, our, our first webinar. Hopefully, it was useful for you was useful for you and uh, I will I will uh, is any feedback or any co comments please just let me know by email. Okay. all right thank you thank you all thank right, you thank you bye 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 thank you bye 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 Bye, Dr. G. Who is okay. this? Oh, okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. It's 12.